Uh, okay, I can see that we have all of our panelists right now. So once again, good evening, everyone here in Poland. Good afternoon to our guests in, on the other side of Atlantic and good morning, California. Welcome to the third session of our fair, which will be focused on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics programs. Let me start with some introductions. My name is Maria Brzostek, and I'm an education advisor at the US Consulate in Krakow. For our American presenters, I would like to mention that Krakow is the second largest academic center in Poland with a student population of over 200,000, and it has got one of the oldest and most prestigious universities universities in Europe. So it's certainly a place to visit if you want to learn more about higher education in Poland. For those of you who have not participated in previous panels, let me explain the role of Education USA centers in Poland. Those of you who uh, hear it for the third time will certainly remember where to go for information in, on studies in the United States. Education USA is a state department network of international student advising centers in more than 180 countries worldwide, including Poland. Education USA Poland promotes US higher education and offers unbiased and comprehensive information on uh, US higher education institutions and connects them to Polish students. If you have any further questions related to education in the United States, please contact our centers. They are in Warsaw, Krakow, Wrocław, Katowice, Lublin, and Rado. You will find the contact information at educationusa.pl website. Our session, which will have four guest speakers, will last 50 minutes. After the presentation, there will be time for questions. Like during the previous sessions, the microphones will remain muted. So please ask your questions in English and through the chat box. Please welcome our guests today. Kathleen Williams, Director for West Coast Admissions at Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. Joe Bujolek, Assistant Director of International Admissions at the University of Toledo in Ohio. Rachel Tamponi, uh, Associate Director of Admissions and International Recruitment at Merrimack College in Massachusetts, and Joseph Geminiani, Assistant Director of International Admissions at California Baptist University. This session is about STEM programs. For those of you who may not be familiar with this acronym, S. TEM programs refer to degrees that fall under science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And often STEM curriculum involves an interdisciplinary, hands-on, and applied approach. Uh, the United States has historically been a leader in these fields. If you are planning to study STEM at an American university, our guests will help you gather valuable information about STEM programs, key application components, and possible financial aid. You will also learn from this panel that the schools, which have a variety of STEM programs, also may offer many other programs, including liberal arts and business. You may find out more about it from the school's websites. So now let's move on to presentations. It's time for this. Uh, maybe uh, let's go over to Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. Kathleen, could you please start our session? I would be happy to, and hopefully I will do it uh, since it's a STEM presentation without any technical difficulties, but with me and Zoom, you never <laughs> know. So I just give everyone fair warning. I will try to share my screen. And I did it, yay. All right, I'm always excited when I don't mess up. So let me put it in the, the right mode here. So Lafayette College is just that, a college. What that means is that we have undergraduates only at Lafayette. Um, so for you, the STEM major, that means that all the research opportunities are yours and yours alone. You are not competing with any other um, graduate students for those opportunities. So that's the basic definition of a college in the United States. 
So where the heck is Lafayette? You might not have heard of us before. We're located in Easton, Pennsylvania. Easton is a city of about 30,000 people. It's located about an hour and a half from New York City and an hour and a half from Philadelphia. You're looking at an aerial view of the college and right over that river is the state of Jersey. So we are in Eastern Pennsylvania in the town of Easton. Lafayette College is a little bit different from some other schools in as much as we are both an engineering school and a liberal arts school. Uh, we have 2,600 students. We have 23 division one sports, which is the highest division that you can have at Lafayette, over 200 clubs and organizations. Um, so lots and lots going on. But I wanna to talk to you about what it's like, obviously, because that's the topic of our conversation today, to be a STEM major at Lafayette and what is STEM in general? So STEM and the liberal arts at Lafayette College, we are the, the Lafayette Leopards, that's the leopard you're seeing. So what is STEM all about? So science, technology, engineering, and math, that's STEM, right? Most people would tell us it's about solving problems, building things, designing uh, technology. And while that's true, at Lafayette, we really look at STEM majors and um, STEM in particular as being a group of majors that really make this world a better place. And so while sure, it is about solving problems, building things and developing technology, I think this picture of these little boys playing, you know, Americans, the American sport of baseball, right, um, is, is just so telling because they're about seven years old and they're just involved in their game. But what makes both of these little boys be able to play together is because of engineering and STEM students who were able to design, uh, you know, in their careers, the prostheses that made the little boy who doesn't have any legs also participating in America's pastime sport of baseball. So what does uh, STEM at Lafayette look like? Well, you're going to get the skill set, those analytical skill sets in any major, whether it's engineering, so we, engineering students at Lafayette make up about 30% of our students. Um, um, we have four divisions, engineering, the social sciences, the natural sciences, and the humanities. It is the interweaving of our STEM students with um, these other uh, interdisciplinary studies that creates um, a mindset and really is one that we, we seek for innovation, creativity, deliberate risk-taking, collaboration, and communication. So STEM at Lafayette is all of these things. Lafayette is, um, has a very strong engineering program that I wanna talk to you about. We're rated number 13 in the country. Uh, at Lafayette, we don't admit by major. So if you were to come to us undecided or you were to come to us thinking you wanted to be an art student, and you discovered engineering through um, taking introduction to engineering, we would say welcome to engineering because we use the common application and we admit by student, not by major, not by one of our divisions of engineering, social sciences, natural sciences or the humanities. So quite literally, it is possible for you to do anything you want at Lafayette. As an engineer, our engineers, um, about, as I said, about 30% of them uh, are the students at Lafayette. Within that, about 40% of our students are female in engineering. That's a really high statistic in the United States uh, because still engineering has more of a male dominance to it. We have parity in civil engineering. So 50% women, 50% men. If you are a young woman, know that you will have a sisterhood here at Lafayette in engineering. What makes engineering different at Lafayette also is you have the ability to study abroad, which you would already be doing, of course, by coming to the United States. But our engineers can spend the second semester of their sophomore year in either Bonn, Germany, or Madrid, Madrid, Spain without skipping a beat and assuming, of course, that there are no uh, COVID restrictions to that. Uh, so uh, really um, another strong major at Lafayette is computer science. 
Uh, computer science majors actually in 2019 were the highest uh, paid students graduating from Lafayette College at a staggering average starting salary of $93,000 a year. I mean, to me, that's amazing that a 22 year old could do that. So how does this happen that, that our, um, our STEM students get these amazing jobs? It happens because you have an academic advisor, a career counselor, and an older student right from the beginning who is going to help you at navigate your Lafayette experience. Um, we know that externships, which is you following somebody around in a job for three, uh, three to five days, those opportunities give you the chance to try to figure out what you really do want to study um, and what you envision in your life in STEM. You may find that it, it takes you down a different path that you didn't know altogether. Some of our chemical engineering students, uh, for example, will find geology and convert to geology, or they may double. It is very, um, and by double, I mean get uh, to have two majors. It is not unusual. In fact, it is quite common for Lafayette students to double major uh, or major minor, or in some instances, graduate with a dual degree. That means a BS and a BA. Um, so, yeah. Lafayette graduates are, um, are certainly gainfully employed, but you know what, you shouldn't be that um, impressed with that statistic because in all of our schools, our STEM students are gainfully employed. You're, it's a hot commodity to have to have an engineering or a computer science degree. Uh, but I think what separates you at Lafayette from others is the liberal arts education that goes along with your STEM training takes you from being an individual contributor in your first job to having those um, uh, great communication skills, both orally and, and in writing, that make you, um, and those collaboration skills that take you from being an individual contributor to a leader, to a supervisor, to, uh, to a manager, and ultimately to a CEO. Um, because we certainly have a lot of um, uh, graduates, as you can see, in director positions. So again, at Lafayette, we are, we are uh, educating the whole person, whether in STEM or um, not. And we've been doing engineering for over 150 years, so long before it was cool to be an engineer. Uh, I look forward to talking to you some more. I know you're going to hear from some other great schools about their STEM programs. Thank you. Oh, almost forgot though. Yep, we are, I should have said, um, we are um, a school that does look at demonstrated interest. We're a common app school. So please um, make sure to, to get in touch with us, to come to our events because we do look at uh, demonstrated interest as part of the application process. We are also a school that meets 100% of demonstrated financial need. We require the CSS profile and the FAFSA. Um, if you are a domestic student, but only the CSS profile if you are um, an international student. So also our international students are absolutely um, and do receive our highest scholarships, which are full tuition, uh, that which is a full tuition scholarship. We also have half tuition scholarships and um, merit awards at 10, 15 and $20,000 a year. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. Now let's go to Ohio. Uh, Joe, would you uh, present uh, the Toledo University? Well, hello, everybody. Again, my name is Joe Gajolik, and I am the Assistant Director of International Admission with the University of Toledo. So thanks for joining all of us uh, today to talk about uh, STEM programs. Uh, to start off, uh, the University of Toledo is located in the state of Ohio in the United States. We're considered a Midwestern state. Uh, you will see a, a map kind of giving you some of the larger cities that you may be familiar with uh, in and around uh, the variety of states. We are also located uh, near the Great Lakes, which are a combination of five lakes uh, surrounding uh, the northern part of the United States going into Canada. Uh, you will see a couple pictures uh, of our campus. Uh, we are nestled in a quiet neighborhood. Uh, we are one mile radius from one end to the campus to the other. Lots of greenery, lots of space. Uh, so we're really proud with the location of where we're at uh, to make sure that our students are comfortable uh, as they transition as a University of Toledo rocket student. 
Just an overview of the student's body at the University of Toledo. We're considered a mid-sized university with just over 20,000 total students on campus, both undergrad and graduate level students. We offer at the undergraduate level over 120 different options for our students and over 400 various student organizations that students can get involved with uh, outside of class. Specific to our international student population, we have over 1,600 undergraduate international students. And currently we have 86 countries represented uh, on campus. So we think that we're a very open and diverse student population and campus environment for our incoming international students. The University of Toledo is considered a STEM university, but we also offer other programs through our College of Health, College of Education. We do offer arts and humanities uh, based courses. We also have our own College of Nursing as well as College of Law. Uh, the University of Toledo is well known as a public research university. Uh, the University of Toledo uh, is associated with a hospital system. Uh, so for students that are interested in the medical field, we do have options for students to transition from those undergraduate programs to our graduate programs with the University of Toledo. In regards to STEM, as Kathleen had mentioned uh, briefly in her presentation, the uh, University of Toledo is, is well known for our engineering programs. Uh, a couple different reasons based off of the variety of different options that international students as well as our domestic students have opportunities in studying. So we offer the engineering science majors to the left of the screen. And then we also have technology students uh, to the right. The difference between the two simple terms, the engineering science students will create uh, and the technology students will make sure what is created actually works. So what sets the University of Toledo apart from a lot of the other US based universities is we're one of eight universities that provide students with one year of work experience. At the University of Toledo, as well as other schools in the U.S., you will hear the term of co-op. Uh, so you will work three semesters as an engineering science major and gain that experience. And I think it was mentioned earlier, how do you gain that experience while going to school when businesses and companies are looking for people with experience? And to break that down a little bit further, we're one of two U.S. universities that require the one year of work experience. We work with 46 states in the United States and 44 countries abroad to help those students with those co-op experiences. Here's a listing of the various co-op groups that we work with. We also have a, a business college, so a lot of our business students will have opportunities with internships. Uh, with the various companies that you see noted on the screen. So we're really proud with the cooperation of the 400 or the Fortune 500 schools and being so close to those larger cities, which are homes to those various companies. Transitioning from our engineering program, we do offer a natural science and mathematics as part of the STEM group. Uh, so students have an option of various departments and interests within the STEM program. Uh, right now we're seeing a lot of our students interested in biology and chemistry. And more recently with our Ritter Planetarium, we're getting a lot more students interested in our astronomy program. What sets the University of Toledo apart is the fact that we have the resources for the training. So having a planetarium on campus, you take what you learn in class and apply it. Engineering, you take what you learn in class and apply it to the labs and apply it to your co-op experience. So we're really lucky with the collaboration with our hospital system, being able to have that equipment and those laboratories to help our students learn outside of the class. 
In regards to some opportunities for research, we do offer a research summer program that allows students during the summer uh, to be part of programs along with undergraduate students under the direction of uh, faculty. And some of these actual programs, our undergraduate students can actually work with our graduate students. So learning from students who have been through uh, their undergraduate program. And as you see noted, we've uh, back in 2019, we had over 70 undergraduate students spend over 300 hours uh, during the summer conducting those research. So hands-on, being creative, learning what you've taken in the classroom and apply it to real life. So we all have these great programs and we talk about the great things that we offer academics, but I wanna make sure that students and families that are on the uh, meeting here is to make sure that you're aware of the different support services. So working with the academic advising to make sure that you're taking the classes in order to make sure that you graduate on time. If you need help with writing a term paper or a research paper, uh, we have those various things in place. Uh, career services are very important for those programs that have co-ops and internships because they will teach you how to dress for success, how to write a resume, uh, doing mock interviews, so you're comfortable going into those interviews for those co-ops and those internships. With the University of Toledo, we offer what we call a success coach. And that is a coach outside of the classroom that will help students in anything in regards to transition. So if you need a tutor outside of class, uh, our success coaches will help with those outside resources to make sure that our students are successful while attending the University of Toledo. Just wanna make mention that we do offer a admission merit scholarship. So based off of the time of the admission, uh, we will award a scholarship based off of meeting the terms noted on the uh, page. Uh, we also offer additional scholarships. So the College of Engineering offers additional scholarships that our international students would be eligible for. The Department of Natural Science and Mathematics, the same thing. So students can actually stack or accept more than just one scholarship uh, at the University of Toledo. And in 2020, we are offering, uh, started our tuition guarantee. So once a student starts their program, uh, as they transition through graduation, if there's any price increases for tuition, that fee will be fixed. So there will be no increases in tuition uh, until you actually graduate. So we're really proud and happy with that. So we were asked to provide a fun fact. So we know that there is a Pringles factory in Poland. Uh, so the actual inventor of the Pringles can is a University of Toledo graduate. Uh, his name is Frederick Bauer. And uh, he went on to continue his graduate work. And his uh, claim to fame is the Pringles can, but he'd done a lot of other things for the company Procter & Gamble which is uh, located in the southern part of Ohio. So I uh, wanted to share that fun fact uh, with everybody today. And uh, we do have a lot of student athletes that come from Europe. Uh, so we now have Chris and Woj uh, on our University of Toledo campus. Uh, they're actually uh, two of our tennis players. Uh, so we're really excited and happy uh, with the fact that we can say that we do have a student body and other students from, from Poland uh, that are attending the University of Toledo. So that uh, wraps up my presentation, just some general contact details for you. Uh, so again, wanted to appreciate the time that I was able to be offered today and speak with you uh, all of, a little bit more about the University of Toledo and, and go Rockets. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Let's now go to uh, uh, Rachel. Great, thank you so much. All right, hello everyone. My name is Rachel Tamponi, uh, Associate Director of Admission and International Recruitment at Merrimack. So thank you all for joining today. Um, Poland is one of my favorite places. I know that I went to Krakow for the first time um, just two years ago and I experienced a, a Polish wedding, which was quite a two day celebration. So I was glad to really see the culture there. Um, 
So I just want to let everyone know a little bit about Merrimack. Um, so before we start off, I just kind of like to, to leave with a visual. Um, so this is an aerial shot of our campus. Um, it is a suburban neighborhood. Um, so there's lots of things to do around campus, but it is all in one place. So you can walk to one side, from one side to the other um, in about 20 minutes. Um, we are located about 30 minutes north of Boston um, in Massachusetts. Uh, so we are on the train. You can get downtown um, very easily by train. As far as kind of other locations, um, we are close to the coast, so very close to the beach, um, as well as the mountains. So if you're interested in skiing, snowboarding, uh, anything coastal, uh, we have all of those boxes checked. Um, regarding STEM, the Boston area specifically, um, in regards to education, um, big corporate companies, um, it is really a hub for tech and everything STEM. So we have lots of internship opportunities that are available for students um, to take part in. We are located in the Merrimack Valley, which is kind of a specific tech hub. So we have um, right in our backyard, Pfizer, Raytheon, iRobot. Uh, a lot of those big tech companies where our students can get that experiential learning component. A little general information before we jump into the STEM uh, about Merrimack. Merrimack is a liberal arts college. Um, so we have 4,000 undergrad students, 1,200 graduate students. Um, we do have a big pre-professional STEM focus with a liberal art core curriculum. So essentially what that means is you're going to get a little bit of everything, but you're going to get the background of, you know, how to public speak how to write. Um, by having taking those liberal art courses, you're going to be able to apply those in your STEM classes. And that's going to be some important things, you know, when you're doing your job search, gaining those skills of being able to, um, to write and articulate yourselves, um, to being able to network, to be able to speak in front of large groups. Um, these are all things that will be really beneficial in your career. So we have over 100 different academic programs today. The focus will be on STEM, but we also do have a business school, a school of education and social policy, um, as well as many other liberal art programs. So lots to choose from. You can also double major. So you can major in a STEM field and pull in some of those other areas of interest, um, if that's something that you might like to do. Um, we have a 15 to one student faculty ratio. So we do keep our class sizes very small. All of our classes are faculty taught. So we don't have any teaching assistants that teach the classes. Um, so you'll really be able to develop relationships with your faculty members. They're gonna have an interest in you as a student um, and you'll be able to access them very easily. Um, Merrimack College is an Augustinian Catholic institution. So we are one of two um, in the United States. Villanova is our sister school down in Pennsylvania. Um, really big focus on service, leadership, community. Um, so it's a really warm and welcoming place to be. We do a lot of service learning in the classroom. I'll talk about some of the things um, that are STEM related specifically to service learning. We have over 60 different um, clubs and activities, so lots of ways to get involved. I'll talk about some of those STEM programs as well. Um, and then we are D1 in the NCAA for all athletic programs. Um, so we are kind of at that highest level of competition um, regarding athletics. So we do have our School of Science and Engineering. Um, so this is kind of a sampling of the majors that are available. So um, we do have biology. So for students that may be interested in the health profession, so maybe a pre-dental, pre-vet um, track, that would be kind of the area that you may wanna focus. You can really have any major, um, but integrative biology does line up very nice. Uh, we do have um, a new boathouse and boats that students can take if they are interested in more of the ecology, environmental, um, biology track. Um, so that's been very popular. We do a lot around um, taking students out to track whales. So they go on um, whale watches. So a lot of cool things kind of right in our backyard. Um, we have the chemistry program. Um, we have a confocal microscope on campus. So that's kind of for a smaller school, um, some really big and exciting equipment that students are using. Um, we do a lot around genetic research. We have a CRISPR here. Um, we have four ABET accredited engineering programs. So that ABET accreditation is a, a standard that you wanna look for in any of the engineering programs that you're applying to. Um, so we have civil, mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering. We also have an undecided track for engineering. So if you don't know, that's okay. You can start in that coursework. Um, we have computer science, um, big focus right now on cyber and network security. It's been very popular. Um, data science is a newer major for us. It's typically common at the graduate level. So it's been you know, very popular, high demand um, jobs in this area. So data science is now available as an undergraduate degree program. 
Um, we do have environmental sciences. Um, we have it within the School of Science and Engineering, which is more lab and science based. We also do have that in a more policy based capacity in our School of Liberal Arts. Um, we have mathematics, um, brand new neuroscience program this year, as well as physics. Um, and then I mentioned the undecided options, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, at the end of the panel. So I'd just like to include some visuals. Um, the, the top left photo um, are our students. Um, we have one of the biggest, um, the biggest telescope north of Boston. So if you're interested in kind of stargazing and, and finding those things, um, you can certainly do that here. We also have a greenhouse on the roof of that same building on campus. Um, the next picture are our students on the right competing in the steel bridge competition. So this is an annual competition that students um, in the civil engineering program partake in every year. They usually place in the top 10. So it's very competitive um, and very fun. Um, we have our computer science students on the bottom left um, doing some coding. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about the health sciences because I think that that can and cannot fall into STEM, but I do want to give um, just a little bit of uh, mention to the health profession. So the, the photo on the bottom right um, is one of our bachelor's of science in nursing students um, who is working on um, kind of the, the fake people that you can program to have all different types of things happen to them and then students have to respond. So just to mention, if you're interested in the sciences, but more of a health science track, you know, we have athletic training, we have nursing, um, we have nutrition, we have public health. Um, so there are a lot of options in that area as well. Um, and then I want to mention, you know, there's other ways to get involved in the STEM fields um, in a more social aspect, ways to build your resume, make connections, um, but also in the form of student organizations, and groups and clubs. Uh, so we have um, the American Society of Civil Engineers, as well as mechanical. Um, we have one for computing and computer science students. Um, the Adams family is kind of a fun one that they named. Um, that is the chemistry club that we have on campus. Um, we have Future Health Profession Society, so folks that are kind of on that pre-med, pre-dental, pre-veterinary track, um, they all get together and talk about, you know, what they can do to build their resumes, prepare for med school, veterinary school, you know, whatever that next step may be. Um, the Health Science Club, we have a club specific for electrical engineers. Um, we have a 3D printing club, um, so something that they have done in the past is um, they 3D print prosthetic limbs um, for children in need and they send those out to, to children. They outgrow them very quick. So they're always making, you know, fun kind of superhero arms and, and different things. So it's a really great program that also gives back. Um, we have our National Society of Black Engineers. We have a nursing club. Um, and then we have a very active society for women engineers. Um, so many of these groups, students have the op opportunities to engage in conferences, national conferences, they get to travel. Um, so they're very active. It's a great way to build your resume um, and kind of get a little bit deeper into the field. Um, I mentioned a bit about service learning. So we also do some kind of physical trips um, in non-COVID times. So our civil engineers have gone to you know, Haiti after an earthquake and helped build bridges so folks could access clean waterways. Um, so there's a lot of great opportunities, hands-on learning experiences, but also giving back um, to others because that's very much at the core of, of who Merrimack is as a school. And we're very career focused. Um, so at this point in time, 86% of students um, partake in co-op or internship opportunities. We're now guaranteeing that for all students. Um, anyone in the science engineering field does need an internship as part of their program um, to graduate. So that'll be a very important part. Um, most of them are paid, especially in the STEM fields. Uh, so you're gonna be able to you know, get some, um, get a little bit of a paycheck as well as getting your foot in the door, building your resume, um, which is really important. All of our students have their faculty advisor, but then they also have a dedicated career advisor that is specific to the School of Science and Engineering or to the School of Health Sciences. And they start working with you from your freshman year, um, really making sure you're gonna get those hands-on learning opportunities. Um, our faculty are scholar practitioners. So while they you know, are great in the classroom, they also have tons of industry connections. They're doing research. Um, being a smaller school, if you're working with faculty, you can start, you know, research opportunities as early as your freshman year. Um, so that is, you know, the benefit of maybe choosing a smaller school where you may have to wait at a larger school. Um, we really provide students the opportunity to connect with faculty, you know, right away if that's something of interest to them. Um, something to think about as an international student studying in the STEM fields. I'm not sure if anyone's mentioned it, but um, there are kind of some things you have to consider. So there's what we call CPT and OPT. Um, so CPT is part of your curriculum. So if you're going to be doing an internship, 
um, at an outside company and not doing that on the campus. Um, you'd be on curricular practical training is what it's called. So CPT, you might hear thrown around. And then after you graduate, um, we have what's called OPT. Um, so that is when you're actually applying the skills you learn from your degree and joining a company in the world of work while the school will still sponsor your visa. Um, so for the STEM fields in particular, you can have up to 18 months right now of work experience uh, in the US um, where you're gonna be you know, working for a company full time, still supported by the school's visa. Um, so just something to think about words that you might hear, um, but those experiential hands-on opportunities are certainly available to international students. Uh, and then I actually, if students wanna stay in the United States, uh, many times companies will, will eventually sponsor their visa so they can stay here and work if that is you know, a goal for you. And then just thinking about outcomes, 96% um, of our Rachel. students are full-time employed um, or in grad school within nine months of graduation. And then thinking about long-term return on investment, um, students are making 60% higher than the national average. So definitely very career focused. Um, no matter where you go, definitely get that hands-on experiential learning because that's going to really help you um, in the job search. Uh, so, sorry, Rachel, but I'm afraid that your time has passed and we need to move on with the next panelist. So sorry about it. No worries. Thanks a lot. Joseph, please go on, please continue. Uh, Rachel, you will have uh, also time to finish uh, with maybe some of your uh, points at uh, when we have time for, for questions at the end of the panel. Uh, Joseph, please go on. Well, hi everyone. Uh, glad to be with you all today. Uh, hopefully you can all see my screen. If not, chat me so I know. I'm not the best with technology, which is ironic doing a STEM presentation, but um, I'm excited to tell you guys a little bit about our university. Um, I actually studied at California Baptist University as a student. I was a math major myself, and I also studied chemistry. So I get the few of us out there that like math. <laughs> uh, and so I'm glad you guys are here to learn more about STEM programs. So a little bit about CBU. We are located in Southern California. We're in a city called Riverside. This picture is an aerial shot of our campus. We fit on one city block. Um, it's about 65 hectares. We have about 11,000 students and about 6,000 of those are undergrad. About 2,000 are graduate students and about 150 doctoral students. And then we also have about 2,500 that are studying fully online. Um, we are also WASC accredited. So the degree that you're getting at CBU is valuable. And then we have additional accreditations on each of our major programs like engineering and business and some of our health sciences and uh, specialized programs like speech and language pathology. So you're getting valuable degrees uh, at CBU. And then of course, as hopefully you can see in this aerial shot, it's a beautiful campus. Southern California is a wonderful place to be. Um, it's currently about 75 degrees Fahrenheit here, which is about 23, 24 degrees Celsius. And it's like that for most of the year. So if you wanna be in a warm place, um, Cal California and Southern California is for you. And we are actually ranked number five for the best campus in the US by niche.com. Um, we're also number two in California. So again, it's a beautiful place to be. This is actually a picture of our center court uh, this is a picture of our new entrance at CBU and a picture of what was our old entrance, but it's still a very valuable part of campus that we show students on tours when they come to visit um, and one of the places they pass by on their way out of campus when they're graduating. At CBU, we have a few uh, highlights that are important, even if you uh, are studying in a STEM program or you're studying in another program, these resources or activities are important for all students. So our career center, for example, is very helpful with assisting students to be prepared for internships or work opportunities when they graduate. Um, Rachel talked about OPT, the optional practical training, and at CBU, our OPT rate is 89%. So we're really proud of that. Just about nine out of 10 international students when they graduate are able to successfully find jobs and start working and maximize their OPT. Um, that rate is a little bit higher in some of our STEM programs like engineering, which I'll talk about in just a bit. 
Um, we are also part of NCAA Division I in the Western Athletic Conference, which is really exciting. Our teams are doing really well. Uh, for example, our women's basketball team that you see in that picture there, they are um, one of the few in history to do what they did. They were the sixth team to have an unblemished or a perfect conference season. And they were the first ever to finish the regular season unbeaten in the Western Athletic Conference. So that's really exciting. Um, we are still transitioning into D1, so they couldn't go to the tournament, the big tournament this year, but we're looking forward to that in future years. Um, they finished their season with 26 wins and then just their final loss. They were undefeated until their final loss against Rice University. Um, and then I put a picture up of some of our cross-country athletes. Uh, Amelia, she's actually from Poland. She's a Polish student that came here to race and to study, and she's had a wonderful time here at CBU. And then uh, there's another picture of some of our activities on campus. This is actually me uh, from an event when I was a student called the Festival of Color. It's put on by our International Center to give students opportunities to celebrate different cultures from around the world. And this is one where we all throw colored powder and have the color war. It was one of my favorite events. And then another fun fact about us, we actually have excellent food. We're also ranked number five in the US for best food by niche.com. And again, number two in California. And then there's many other activities, clubs on campus that help produce a really rich campus life. Uh, in terms of academic programs, we have over 80 undergraduate programs and over 40 graduate programs. I know this is mostly focused on undergraduate, which is where I'll spend most of my time, but some of our most popular programs include business, kinesiology, nursing, engineering, and then what we call CAVAD for the College of Architecture, Visual Arts and Design, Graphic Design, Photography, Film. Those are all very popular programs. But I wanna focus mostly on STEM since that's what our session is about. Engineering is our most popular set of options for STEM programs at CBU. That is a picture of our new engineering building at CBU it was built a few years ago. And another fun fact, some of our students did their internship while they were still studying at CBU at the company that helped build our engineering building. <clears throat> so they, get, they got to be uh, very truthfully a historical part of CBU's engineering program. All of our engineering programs are direct entry. So you don't need to apply to CBU and then engineering. It's the same application and they are all four years. And during those four years, you have a guaranteed mandatory internship during the summer between your third and fourth year. So you've heard about co-op opportunities um, in the previous panelists. Those are great ways to get uh, maybe a longer amount of work experience before you graduate. At CBU, we're gonna get you through your whole degree in four years with the internship. And the placement rate into full-time jobs for our engineers when they graduate is 95%. So a good, you have a very good chance of successfully getting your internship and that turning into a full-time job when you graduate for your OPT. And because these are STEM, they are able to be extended by two more years in your work opportunities. You can work for a full three years in the US once you finish your degree. Some other STEM designated programs within our health sciences. As Rachel mentioned, there are a lot of health science programs that are not STEM designated by the US De uh, Department of Homeland Security but you can still be a participant in those programs. You just can't extend your OPT or work experience. With these programs at CBU, exercise science, nutrition and radiologic sciences, you can indeed extend your um, work experience when you graduate because they are STEM designated. And then some other popular STEM designated programs at CBU uh, include our biological sciences or biomedical sciences. Um, we do have well above the average 50% uh, placement rate in the medical schools. Ours has ranged from 75 to 90% on any given year for graduating classes. Um, I, again, was a math major at CBU and I loved my opportunity. I did research in quantum mechanics with my professor and got to present at conferences on that. In terms of applying to CBU, we do have financial aid to help you in making CBU a financial reality. And one of those is our ambassador scholarship. It's $12,000 if you have a 3.5 GPA or higher. If you're on the six point scale in Poland, then that's about a 4.5 average. I'm happy to look at your transcripts for you if you wanna take a look and see if you would qualify for that scholarship. And then we do have a $10,000 grant. 
up to 10,000 based on financial need and that's a private application with us. And then there's other departmental scholarships like engineering, architecture, or if you wanna participate in music, speech and debate, where you can apply for those and add it to your award. In terms of English requirements, we don't require you to submit a language score because we do have an intensive English program at CBU. So you can have joint admission to do our language program. And then when you're done, transition into engineering or math or architecture. Um, but if you do want to skip the language program, which is common, then you do have to submit one of these language scores. Uh, you'll notice DET or Duolingo doesn't have a score next to it. And that's because we review each of those individually and we don't have a set score. And lastly, if you were interested in applying, it's a really short link. Um, CBU often goes by Cal Baptist. So that's our main website link and then INTL apply. And I'm happy to give that to you uh, later if anyone has questions in the q and I can put that link in there. And we do have a fee waiver for uh, students that are working with Education USA. Um, so if you are working with the office, um, any of the offices in, in Poland, you can use this promotional code to waive our $45 application fee because we are not on the Common App. We are a private application because we're a private university. So that is a little bit about CBU. I tried to do that all in seven minutes. Hopefully I didn't go too fast for you, but I'll stop sharing now and turn it back over to you, Maria. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Joseph. I'm afraid we won't have time for Q&A session because we need to finish at uh, uh, seven o'clock. Uh, but uh, luckily and fortunately, most of the questions that I have prepared from uh, our um, applications, from our registrations, uh, were answered in your presentations. Uh, there, there was a question about uh, uh, special programs for undecisive students, that were, which uh, you answered. There was a, uh, another question about uh, activities and, and the campus that uh, you elaborated on uh, Joseph. So, uh, so I think students got the answers uh, from your presentations on the questions. Um, one thing that uh, also uh, uh, I was going to ask you about was uh, the very frequent question uh, on the, the difference between college and university. And uh, Kathleen, you answered that question as well. Uh, so I think we, we are good. Um, and uh, we have to finish right now because uh, the time is up. Thank you so much uh, for your participation, for your presentation. Uh, for the students who are interested in your universities, please contact uh, the uh, representatives of each university individually. Uh, they will give you the uh, contact information. And also this information is uh, at the uh, website of our fair. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, thank you so much.